Sure. Thank sure. you. So, Brother Fred. The message tonight is called Living Life to Its Fullest. Mm. Now, that's what Jesus came to do. He came to give us life and a life more abundantly. And, Amen. And let's, let's live that life. You know, in Deuteronomy, it said, I set before you life and death. And uh, I know that all of you uh, are uh, Christians. And, and so maybe that part of it is not as relevant as living a life to the fullest. I said before you this day, living life to the fullest or just existing, just barely getting by, just living a meager life. And let's choose to live life to the fullest. And so we're going to talk about that and, and how to do it. And I want to start by saying God's word and his spirit work together. Uh, there's a lot of people that really focus on the word and they leave the spirit out. And uh, there's just destruction if you are not putting the two together. The life comes when the two operate uh, together. Uh, and, and, you know, Psalm 33, 6 says that uh, all of creation was made by the word of the Lord and by his breath. Now, let's think about how we form words in our mouth. We uh, exhale, or we put out uh, our breath. And so as we uh, breathe out, and, and put our mouth in certain ways, we can form words that have a content to them, but it's that breath behind them uh, that brings it forth. Mm -hmm. And without the breath, you know, without the breath, uh, we don't have it. And so God created the universe by his word and by his breath, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, Amen. Isaiah uh, 55 verses 10 through 11 says, as the rain and the snow come down on the earth and do not return, but that when they come down on the earth, the earth produces it. It produces plants and it produces different things so that there is seed for the sower and bread for the eater. Mm. And that's the way my word is, he said. Mm. It will not return to me empty. It will not return to me void. I send it out and it accomplishes well, what I propose, what I desire. Oh, glory. What God, what God desires is going to come to pass and it's going to be successful. And so it's these two things working together. And this is where we get life. And that's real important for us to understand that because there are a lot of congregations that focus on the word and they <clears throat> don't make room for the spirit, spirit of, of God. God. Amen. And that's the reason he said, don't quench the movement of the Holy, Holy spirit. spirit. Don't, don't do those kinds of things. You've got to have the flow of the Holy spirit. If you're going to have life. Now we know that there is life both in the word and in the spirit. So I just want to go over a, a, a few verses that talk about that. You know, Jesus said in John, John 11, 25, he said, my, I am the resurrection and the life. Woo, hallelujah. But who is Jesus? Jesus has always been the word. He's always been. In the beginning was the word. But you know, there's another translation that I like a lot and it's the voice and it says in the beginning was the voice oh glory see glory. we don't we we didn't have a written word in the beginning Ooh. in the in the beginning we had the voice mm. of god and the voice is was with god mm. and the voice was god mm. and in john 1 4 it says in the voice or in him is life so we know that in the word of god the living word of god there is life, and that's real important for us to know. He is the resurrection and the life. Mm. He said, I am the way, the truth, and, and the, the life. life. Thank you. <laughs> so if you have Jesus in your heart, you have life. But how much life do you have? That's what we're, be, what we're going to be focusing on tonight, how much life. We also have to take into account uh, the spirit of God because it's this it's by the spirit the spirit is life and that's real important for us to remember the spirit is life 
And we want to remember that we need both of these operating in our life. You know, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 says, the letter kills, mm. but the spirit brings life. And so those people who focus only on the word and don't bring in the life, they don't let the spirit of God bring life to it. It says it's death and it's, it's destruction. It's just mm. a terrible a situation it brings bondage and it brings destruction mm -hmm. if we don't have the spirit you, you know you, you can think about um two scriptures and I, and I love those two, two scriptures in proverbs one of them says uh, uh don't uh, reply to a fool in his folly and the next one says answer a fool in his folly mm -hmm. and, and it, obviously we could pick one of them or the other one but which one is right in the moment it's only by the spirit of god we know whether to answer a fool in his folly or not and there's a lot of other scriptures that are that are like that we have to know by the spirit of god so it's by the spirit of god and and there there are some verses in romans 8 you know, there's just so much in Romans 8, but there, there, it says in Romans 8, 6, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and, and peace. peace. So here's a way that we can increase life is to renew our mind. Yes. I and know. how do we renew our mind? Well, you have to sacrifice your body, uh, put everything on the altar, and then you're a candidate to renew your mind. Uh, but if you're carnally minded, and there are a lot of Christians, a lot of people who accept Jesus in their heart and they never renew their mind, they're carnally minded. And so that's going to lead to destruction, bondage and destruction. But to be spiritually minded is life mm. and peace. peace. So how can we have a uh, life and peace? It's to renew our mind. The 10th verse of Romans 8, uh, says this, if we have Christ living in us, then we have life in our spirit. So where is the spirit? Where does the life uh, reside? It resides in the spirit. Uh, you know, John uh, 15, 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, well, where, your word, where his words are going to abide, they're going to be living in the spirit. And so that's where Jesus is. Uh, if Jesus is inside you, he is in your spirit. And I believe that uh, for all of you, the Jesus is here and that's where he is. And he brings life uh, to your spirit. Now, the 13th verse of Romans 8 talks about we have to put to death the deeds of the flesh. Woo, glory. So if mm -hmm. we're putting the death to the deeds of the flesh, then we have life. But what if you're not putting to death the deeds of the flesh, then you don't have that life. And, and so there are a lot of conditions about how to have life and how to have it more abundantly. abundantly. That's the yeah. reason Jesus came. And so this is an important concept, how to have life. See, we're starting a new series tonight and the new series is Life-Giving Ministry. And so that's the reason we have to start here with this building block of life and because you don't have anything to give another person if you don't have life. Mm -hmm. The only way you have life to give somebody is to receive life. So I've talked mm -hmm. about just a few word, a few ways to receive that life, and it's about receiving Jesus into your heart. But there's a lot of things you can do. You can renew your mind. That's going to cause you to have more life. And, and you can crucify the deeds of the flesh. flesh. And, mm. and, and that'll give you more life. And you can pick up your cross. And, and, you, mm. and, and you're taking up his life. See, if mm. a person tries to preserve their life, they'll lose it. And so I'm talking about spiritual life. And I love Galatians chapter six, verse one, that says, you who are spiritually, who you who are spiritual, 
do something about it. Restore, yeah, restore those who have fallen down. Restore, or minister to those people that are hurting. If you are spiritual, now how do we know if you're spiritual? It's how much life you have in you. Ooh, and it comes, it comes from two different sources. It comes from the word of God and from the spirit of God. And if you never put the word of God inside of you, well, how much life do you have? Because the life is in the word of God. In him, in, in that voice, in that word, that's mm. where life is. Mm. So, mm. yes. And so we put that word inside of us, in our spirit, and they, then, we have, uh, then we have life within us. But also a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And, and so if we're crucifying the deeds of the flesh, so in other words, we're not following, we're not following the flesh. Uh, we're not... Uh, in bondage to the flesh, but we've crucified that. Oh, yeah. We've all been tempted, yeah. but it's not about tempted. It's about what we yield our members to, what we yield ourselves to. So this is about life and having it inside of us. You know, Job put it uh, like this. He said, uh, God created me by the spirit of God. He created me in the almighty breathe his breath upon me and gave me life so we have to have not only the word of god but it's the living word of god and then we have to have the spirit so what we're doing in this series then is talking about ministering life to other people and it will have to start here uh, but what i wanted you to know in this series is that Sherry and I have been in the ministry for a lot of years, mm -hmm. and we've learned some things. We, we've been to the Hard Knocks uh, University, and we've <laughs> learned some things, and we want to pass those things on to you. We don't want you to have to go through the same thing we went through, and uh, one of the things I, I really want to give as a personal story tonight is about how we uh, increased life and in ourselves because we have ministered in a lot of different ways and I'll, I'll mention a few of those and, and I want you to know where we got our life from uh, you know I could easily say uh, that it's time for me to just uh, pass the baton and sit in my easy chair but you know, God and rock, gave, rock, 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 and rock, rock and rock, rock. But you know what? God, God gave us a word today. And, and what he said was to expand. Woo! He didn't say, sit, Hallelujah! sit in your easy chair and just take it easy and pass this on to the other people uh, in this group. Don't no, he didn't say that. He said, pass, uh, expand. expand. That meant expand our vision, expand our ministry, expand our territory, expand yes. our Hallelujah. realm of influence. So we're not, we're not setting down, but we have learned some things. And these are the things I want to pass on to you. And I want to give you some personal examples about how we have increased life in ourselves and how we have ministered life then to other people mm. and it was by the word and by the spirit and i want to start with this example a number of years ago uh, we had spent years uh, preparing for the ministry and studying the word of god and and being taught the word of god and and we went to a lot of different places and and followed a lot of uh, different people and so there was a time then that the lord said to me uh, that we needed to connect with apostles and prophets. A and I didn't really know what that looked like. And I didn't know how to find apostles and prophets because I had never really experienced it, nor had anybody shown me. But I saw it in the word. There's a lot of things about apostles and the prophets mm -hmm. in the word of God. And I knew that we had been called to connect to apostles and prophets. And I'll tell you why in a, in a few moments, but I knew that was important, but I didn't know how to do it. And, and so we thought, or I'll say, I, I thought we could connect through local congregations and I didn't know where. So we spent about, I'd say four and a half years mm -hmm. you know, looking in different congregations here in our town. And, and uh, I, I wanna give you just a little bit of, of uh, description of, of those uh, 
And really, there were three congregations that we spent quite a bit of time uh, in, uh, let's say about a year and a half in these three different congregations. And uh, anytime we got in a local congregation, we just poured ourselves into that local congregation. We we taught and, mm -hmm. and, and we taught the youth, we taught the adults, we taught uh, uh, and we, we cleaned the bathrooms. We participated in programs. And uh, after the first, uh, we were in the first uh, uh, congregation, let's say for about a year and a half, and I, I thought everything was going to be fine, but I, I didn't really discern exactly what was going on, but this is what the Holy Spirit told me. He said, this pastor is just feeding pablum to the people. Well, I didn't even know what pablum was. That wasn't a word, <laughs> word I used in my vocabulary. But what it meant, it's just a bland cereal that has not much nutrient. Did uh, you for, feed little babies? For infants, and it's not about adults. You know, adults are supposed to have the strong food, the strong meat. And, and, and so we had to leave there. And so, and, and all, all three of these congregations said they were full gospel and they believed in the gifts and they believed in this and that and everything. They believed in everything. But in reality, when you go into places like that, you find out they really don't. don't they don't believe. <laughs> they don't believe. Uh, but they said they believed. Okay. So he said, uh, the Holy Spirit said, this pastor is just feeding Pablo. And, and in all three of these uh, congregations we were in, we, they, they looked on the surface, they looked very good because they were growing, they were building new buildings, we participated mm -hmm. in their programs. programs, we participated in their building programs, uh, we just sold out, and uh, but we had to leave there mm -hmm. when he said, the pastor is just feeding Pablo, because I'm looking for more than that, I, I, I'm not satisfied to just settle for the least, I, I'm looking for the living life to the abundant. Mm -hmm. Okay, we went to the next uh, congregation again. We just poured ourselves into it. We helped finance the uh, the new building they were building, and we taught the adults. And we taught uh, different ones and participated in the in the programs. and And the Lord said, in this case, He said, "Leave or die." The die the they don't believe in healing. Here. Oh, that's right. Leave or die. Oh, well, glory to God. Well. I, I mean, I hated to think that I'd spent all those months there uh, participating in that, but it just came up, and we, that's when we found out they didn't believe in healing. So we went to a third, and because, see, healing for us is yeah, life Yeah, it's death. life. Yeah. It's life or death, and we're not going to go someplace where they don't believe in healing. Now, the third place we went to, and what I'm trying to say from this and give you some uh, ideas about how we got life. Uh, and the third place we went to, they had healing lines. Yes, so they did. So yes. It's, so it's not like they didn't believe in healing. They had healing lines. But uh, after about a year or so, the Lord said, uh, by the Spirit of God, these people are emaciated. Again, this is oh, a word I don't even use. Yeah. My <laughs> pepper. I had to look it up. Emaciated. <laughs> That meant they were weak and thin. Yes, because and they were starving. They were starving because the pastor wasn't even feeding them. Okay, so we're looking for apostles and prophets, and we're going to full gospel congregations, they say. That's what the word said on the on the door, but it wasn't so when we went inside and found them. We're looking for apostles and prophets, and we didn't know how to find them. But you know, God knew how to find them, and Amen. so he connected us with apostles and prophets, and, and they, they lived hundreds of miles away. Yeah. And that was all a miracle, and so we did connect with apostles and prophets. Uh, and so that was a very important part of that time period as a very important part of our life and how our life increased. And I, I want to say that uh, it, it's important to know how we get life. And, and the key to life, mm -hmm. see, is in uh, John chapter four, verse uh, 34. Uh, and G Jesus was talking to the woman at the well of Samaria, at Samaria, and uh, he uh, was talking to that woman, and then she got pretty excited about meeting Jesus, and she ran back to town. She left her water pot there. She'd come out to get water, and he had a conversation, and I know you all know the story, but 
the disciples came back and said, have you eaten? We've got this food. And he said, I have food to eat that you know not of. Uh, but my food is to do the will of the Father. Woo, okay, glory. so your spirit then has the life in it, and you've got to feed, feed your spirit, man, and you do it by doing the will of the Father. That's Hallelujah. the key. That's the key to this whole message tonight. Don't, uh, don't forget it. That's the key to the message tonight. This is how you increase Life is by doing the will of the Father. So you, we all have life within us. It comes from the Word. It comes from the Spirit. And But we have to feed it by doing the will of the Father. That's what Jesus said. And, and you know, in uh, it says in James 1.22, don't be a hearer of the Word uh, only, but a doer. Do be a doer do of, of the Word. word. Otherwise, you're going to deceive yourself. Now, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you want the truth, so you can't be deceived, you've got to stick with Jesus and, and increase that life. And, and it's got to be the truth. And so no deception. You can't have deception in your life. Okay, so then this, that's the first key. The second way, and I'm applying how to increase your life. And in such a way that we can minister life to other people. But this message tonight is about how can we increase our life? Because God has set before us every day life and death. What are we going to choose? We have to make choices every day. Make the right decision to increase your life. So the first key is about doing the will of the Father. The second is connecting with apostles and prophets and see that's what we what we had in our heart we needed to connect with apostles and prophets and i want to talk about that for a moment you know first corinthians 12 28 says there's an order in the body of christ and in the kingdom of god and first are po apostles. apostles and second prophets after mm. that are others including uh, signs and wonders Okay, so why did we, Sherry and I, why did we need to connect with apostles and prophets? Well, Ephesians 2 verse 20 says that the apostles and prophets lay a foundation. Yeah. So they lay yeah. a different foundation. So you can build differently mm. on a, a foundation that's laid by apostles and prophets that you can by a foundation built on pastors. Woo, because there is no, there is Woo. no reference to scripture uh, uh, to, a, to a foundation built on pastors. The foundation is built on apostles, apostles and, prophets. and prophets. And so we have to be connected to apostles and prophets in order to have, be on the right foundation. Oh, glory to God. I mean, I, I want you to know it's important who you're connected with. And I knew, see, this is years ago. I knew I, that God had apostles and prophets for um, Sherry and I to be connected to, but I had no idea what they looked like, had no idea where they were or how to get to them. And I looked in a lot of wrong places. I looked in local congregations mm. that were pastors that they were headed by pastors who had no connections with apostles and prophets, and they don't have the right foundation, and they could not release Sherry and me into our destiny Woo, glory. Uh, because we needed apostles and prophets because mm -hmm. she and I are called to the nations. Amen. We're called to the nations. We're not limited to a local congregation, and although we have a heart for the local congregation. Mm -hmm. That's not where our calling is. And I want you to know that many of you have a calling to do things beyond, beyond the, the local, local congregation. congregation. And so you need to know apostles and prophets and how to connect to them and what they what they look like and what they do and what they do for you because mm -hmm. they increase your life. Mm -hmm. And that was so dramatic for Sherry and I mm -hmm. when we were in a conference in Mexico with apostles and prophets. 
And our spiritual father uh, said, it's time to set apart Fred and Sherry for the work of the ministry for the kingdom of God. And so all the apostles and prophets gathered around us and they began to prophesy over us. And there was a release in, he in heaven. I and I want to describe it this way, that as long as we were in a congregation, and, and that's who all we had uh, a right to think about was being a part of that congregation. And we couldn't think about anything beyond that. There was a limitation put on us on, on what we were going to do in our life. And so doing the will of the Father within uh, that uh, perspective, we had a limit on us. But when we connected with apostles and prophets, that limit, the lid on it was blown off. And then we were no longer restrained. We no longer had these artificial restrictions on our lives. We could do what God was calling us to do because God was calling us to the nations. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a way that we increased our life is that we wanted to do the will of the Father, but we needed to be connected to apostles and prophets. And let me tell you this. The way that you increase uh, your life uh, is to do the will of the Father. A and if you want to blow the lid off of your potentiality, Hallelujah. You get connected to apostles and prophets. And what do they look like? Well, find out by the scriptures and find out by the word of God. They lay a foundation in your life that's not a foundation of pastors. Now, I do want to say this on the side. There's a lot of people out there uh, in uh, congregations that call themselves apostles and prophets, but God didn't call them. He didn't call them that. He didn't set them that way. Uh, a lot of people are, are called by men and promoted by men, and they may start out as an evangelist, but they have a promotion system, and they're promoted uh, to maybe pastor and then maybe a prophet and then maybe apostle, but that's not God's way of doing things. Mm -hmm. God calls people. Yes. He calls yes. people to be apostles and he calls people to be prophets. And so men do not call apostles and prophets, but God does. But there's a, I, I do also want to say this, that there are uh, a lot of local congregations that picked up a vocabulary of apostles and prophets and they have a mm -hmm. new vocabulary but they keep operating the same way you know jesus warned us against religion he said these <laughs> religious people they're going to go <laughs> around the world and they're going to make converts and uh -huh. and they're going to make them twice the child of the, the hell Ooh, Lord. twice the child oh. of hell that they are they're laying burdens Woo. Religion lays burdens on you. I'm talking about Matthew 23. It lays burdens on you and will not lift a finger to help you. Lay burdens. And I tell you, when we were uh, in those kind of settings, in religious settings, and we've been in plenty of them, they laid, tried to lay uh, burdens on me. Uh, I was born again when I was 13. And for the next few years, uh, they kept saying, Oh, you old dirty, dirty sinner. sinner, come down to the altar and get born again. Well, I was born again. I was born again when I was 13. I had to have somebody who would equip me and train me so I could do what God had called me to do. And it's the same thing for you. You need somebody who will train you and equip you to be who God has called you Hallelujah. to be, not to train you and put you in a little box and say, I've got a big vision, and I want you to be in this little box and help me fulfill my vision. No, no, that's not the way it is. That's not the way apostles and prophets mm -hmm. operate. They find out and help you and support you to find your vision and fulfill your vision and your calling. Okay, so I've gone through two keys. The first one, and the application of this message to have to live life to its fullest. Amen. The first one is to do the will of the Lord, the will of God. You know, what is life anyway? Or well, John 17, 3 says, this is the definition of life. And, and the message puts it real life. This is the definition, definition of, of real life, life that you will know and experience 
God the Father and Jesus Christ his Son. That is what life is, knowing and experiencing God the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. Now, I've mm -hmm. talked about two different ways to increase uh, you, the life that you have so that you can have abundant life. And the first one is to do the will of the Father. The second is to connect with apostles and prophets who blow the lid off of the restrictions and restraints on you so that you can have more life, have abundant life. There's too many people that try to put mm -hmm. burdens on you and restrict you and tell you what you can do and, and what, you, what can't do. you can't do and when you can do it. Uh, you know, I had a pastor come up to me one day and I, I was just raising my hand, standing up and worshiping. And and they told me not to do that, that I was I was too active. I was just too much. <laughs> and, and I thought, well, he's the pastor. I'll, I'll do what he says. I'll do what he says. Uh, but then, you know, God showed me that heaven was being locked up, locked up. against mm -hmm. me because I wasn't worshiping God mm -hmm. the way the Holy Spirit was leading me and guiding me. Mm -hmm. I have to worship God. I am a worshiper. And Sherry is a worshiper. I know many of you are true worshipers of God because that's who he's seeking, true worshipers. worshipers. And, Amen. and when I'm under the limitations of people and they say, you can't move and you can't open your mouth and you just have, I forget it. I, I've got to go <laughs> where I have freedom to magnify <laughs> my Lord and Savior. Amen. He's worthy of all honor and glory. And Amen. glory. Now, there are three keys I want to talk about yeah. tonight. Yeah. So let's talk about the third key. You're on a roll. The third key is be a <laughs> steward, of, be a good steward of the life you have. However much life you have, be a good steward of it. And, uh, you know, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 8 says, if you sow sparingly, you will reap, reap sparingly. sparingly. But if you sow oh, generously, you will reap, reap generously. generously. So yes. if you have life, then you be, be a so steward. Right. You be a steward of that life by sowing it into other people. And so if you want to live an abundant life, you've got to be sowing life into other people because it will grow and increase. You have some of the life of God in you by doing the will of the Father, by connecting with people who will uh, uh, propel you into your purpose and destiny, but you've got Amen. to be sowing it yourself. Ooh, hallelujah. Now, nobody hallelujah. ever gave us uh, to, to say, okay, you go over there and you go over there and do that. You, you know, because we had known and experienced God and Jesus Christ his son, we had to pour out life. And so where we started, where Sherry and I started, and, and that's a part of the uh, reason we're doing this message is that we've learned about life and how to pour it out and how to receive it back again. And, and we went to the children and we'd just go out into communities where we saw children playing. We we mm. just pulled out our puppets and we'd go over and have a puppet show and their parents would come and we'd tell them about Jesus. And you know, we just did things uh, because we had in us the life of God and we had to pour out the life of, a, of God Amen. to other people and the same thing. And, and, and then we went on to low-income areas and we taught the children. And, and then to the streets. And, and then the, uh, the children's parents came and they said, well, teach us. So we taught them. And, and then we went on the streets and then we uh, raised up a, a mission ourselves, a mission for the homeless and prostitutes and drug addicts and alcoholics. We did that with our finances. And, and, and we were tithing to, to our spiritual uh, connections and our, and our father, we were connected here and all that, but we took the other money uh, that we had and we poured it into the lives of people and we fed them and, and we rented buildings. And, and when that building did, it got too small, we could rent another building and, and another building. And so we started with one small building downtown and we rented then we prayed out the drug uh, traffickers Addicts that were next, next door, door. And, and so we could because they went to prison so we got their building <laughs> and then uh, then we needed a place for the children and so we we uh, put our, put them in the 
uh, uh, what was it? A clove laund laundromat. Laundromat. A laundromat. So in the morning, <laughs> so we'd have laundromat, and our daughter Amy Elizabeth and 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 uh, others would uh, uh, teach the children in the laundromat. And after a while, uh, the, the laundromat went out of business, so we rented that. And then there was a building on the other side of us uh, that was became vacant, so we used it for our children. We had more space in that. So. That was all our finances until other people, until God raised up other people to come uh, be with us. But, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. we didn't stop tithing during that time because we had ministry opportunities. We poured our, our money into it. And what do you know? When you sow so generously, generously, you reap generously. And so God poured it back on us. Uh, oh, hallelujah. 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 And, and so many people are so tight with their money. And they will not put into the kingdom. But it says, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap Re sparingly. sparingly. And our life is that we are sowers. We sow into mm. the kingdom. And God has sown back to Amen. us and, and blessed Amen. us and benefited Amen. us a hundredfold time over all of that. And glory to God. Amen. And I want this message to be an encouragement to Amen. all of you. I'm bringing Amen. it uh, to conclusion. But tonight I've talked about the word. Uh, the word of God has life in it. The spirit of God has life. They work together. And, and then there's three practical things you can do to increase life, your mm -hmm. life. And the first one is do the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. Connect with spiritual people mm -hmm. uh, and particularly in our case we were looking for apostles and prophets uh, because that's who we are and that's what we needed to be connected to you know pastors can't raise up apostles and prophets because there's an order there's first uh, apostles and then secondarily prophets and so that order has to be maintained uh, and then uh, uh, that just blew the lid off of our potentiality mm -hmm. And we were able to increase life in that way. And then and then thirdly, you need to be sowing the life. And, and that's what this uh, series is about, is about you sowing life into other people. So I'm going to close there. And mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah.